Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. This is episode number 263. I am rolling pens and paper across my desk over here trying to uh, not fall out of my chair. Uh, my name is Jason Robertson. I am the owner of Outdoor Legacy. We specialize in all things night vision and thermal optics for uh, hog, coyote, predator hunters. And as always, I've got my co-host, executive producer of the Late Night Vision Show, uh, salesman at Outdoor Legacy, Mr. Hans, East Texas. What's going on tonight, Hans? Okay, that's the intro. I, I thought at some point you were going to say, cut, let's redo it. Because I, <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, I, I know. We're, I, I, he's I'm, still I'm rolling with this. We're still off going. my desk. And, and, uh, it's, we're it's, still it's going with this. not professional. Exactly. Hey, y'all, we are reviewing today the AGM Sidewinders. We've got two 640 uh, Sidewinders that we're going to be reviewing today all at the same time. We're going to be doing everything we always do, specs, side-by-side, -side, bunch of video. Before we jump into it, a couple things. If you're looking to purchase a new night vision or thermal optic, give us a call, 877-350-1818. OutdoorLegacyGear.com. If you're watching on all the, the platforms that show the video, you can see their number and website at the, at the bottom. If you're just listening to the audio-only version, again, OutdoorLegacyGear.com, 877-350-1818. Also, if you saw something come out this Tuesday. It was our, our two minute Tuesday preview for the show. Some people have been asking for that. So every Tuesday, uh, we're going to be putting out a short preview of what's coming up, uh, this week, maybe a little bit of a recap from last week. So something new we just started. And, uh, if you didn't check it out and you want to know, Hey, what's Hans and Jason talking about this week, tune in first thing, Tuesday morning, a two minute short little snippet, uh, preview of what we're going to be doing. But Jason, Let's talk about okay. the new Sidewinder 640s. You got the specs. Let's roll with it. I got the specs. So, guys, I'm going to go ahead and say this. These uh, are the AGM Sidewinder Thermal Monoculars, handheld thermals. These are not mm -hmm. weapons mountable. And we've already reviewed the AGM 384 resolution, a 384 by 288. That's the standard resolution version of these on previous show. And I'm going to mention those units real quick. It's the Sidewinder TM25-384. That unit is $1,995, and it's a 2X base magnification. And then we've got the Sidewinder TM35-384. It is $2,195, $200 more, and it's a three-power base magnification. Absolutely fantastic optics, very good image quality in that standard resolution. And so we're excited to this week bring you the two 640s. We will be reviewing both of them side by side. So when I go over the specs, um, almost all of the specs are the same. The only difference in these two units is the magnification objective lens. Other than that, everything is going to be the same here. So I'm going to go over this as quickly as I can. And uh, try. I know you know you may go. My gosh, he's going so fast. I can't can't keep up. But again, we we want to kind of get through these so we can get to the the meat of the discussion. So these two units, uh, we've got the Sidewinder TM thirty five three eighty four, and the TM. I'm sorry, TM thirty five six forty, mm -hmm. and the TM fifty six forty. All right. The TM35640 is $2,995. The TM50640 is $3,495. All right. So, uh, again, if these don't share the same specification, then I'll let you know. They're both 640 by 512. You will probably hear us at some point refer to these as 640 by 480 because that's just <laughs> the standard resolution. Uh, some of these AGM 640s are 512. It makes no difference. The difference in 480 and 512, I promise you, is you can't tell the difference uh, looking with your eyes. So if you hear us say that, that that's why. But it's actually a 640 mm -hmm. by 512, 12 uh, micron pixel pitch. 50 hertz refresh rate, sub 25 millikelvin NETD rating. The 35 has a 35 millimeter objective lens. The 50 has a 50 millimeter objective lens. The 35 has a, according to the specs, a detection range of a six foot tall object, uh, 1,968 yards. 
uh, the 50, the same six foot object, 2,843 yards because of the higher magnification. Uh, the magnification on the, uh, the 35 is a two power. The magnification on the 50 is a two and a half power. They both have digital zoom of one, two, four, and eight X. So they go, you know, all the way up to, to eight times the base magnification. They have a 1024 by 768 OLED display screen. They have a five year AGM warranty, bumper to bumper warranty. We'll be talking about that a little bit more, I'm sure, later. Uh, they've got color palettes, black hot, white hot, red hot fusion. Uh, they have Wi Fi for uh, streaming to a smartphone app or a tablet. They do have a standby mode. They have audio and video recording on board. Uh, they both, this is our favorite part. Uh, maybe besides the warranty, this is the favorite part. Uh, we're going to talk a bunch about this. 18650, fully removable, rechargeable battery. Uh, gosh, we're going to say it. We're going to say it a whole bunch. We love 18650s. Uh, we hope that all the manufacturers get on board with this. I don't think they're going to, so don't uh, hold your breath. But we, we think it's great. We, we love it. So glad to see that. Uh, battery life. Uh, you're going to get on this unit is going to be up to uh, close to five hours on an 18650. Uh, you know, if you remember the 384 versions, you know, got longer battery life than that. But again, that's a different sensor. So I know somebody's going to say, well, wait a minute, those got almost seven hours, but this is still a very long battery life. Anywhere, anytime you're getting uh, four to five hours on a, um, you know, just basically a straight run time. That's a long time, especially on a single battery. Uh, they do have a USB-C port for charging or for, no, I'm sorry, sorry, not charging, for running off mm -hmm. an external uh, uh, battery pack. You will need to take the 18650 out and charge it externally. They're rated for down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. They're an IPS 6.7 rating, which is a fully waterproof, fully dust proof, submersible in water uh, to three foot for 30 minutes. Dimensions, uh, the 35 is 7.4 inches long by 2.3 inches by 2.6 inches. The 50 is 7.9 by 3 by 2.7, so they're almost the same size. Uh, 1.11 pounds on the 35, 1.4 pounds on the uh, 50. And uh, the only other thing I think missing off my list here is identification range. And the reason that that's not on any of this specification list uh, is because it's it's really an opinion. And mm -hmm. it's it's really comes down to um, even a skill level. So I can hand a, a scope or a monocular to somebody and they may look out there and, and they may say, hey, I can see that's a mm -hmm. hog at, you know, whatever, 500 yards. And I may pick it up and go, I can't tell that. How do you know that? And the right. next guy may look out there at 200 yards and he may say, I, I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> so again, there, there's some there's some skill level. There's some, some experience mm -hmm. that comes into that. There's conditions. Uh, there's how tall is the grass, the weather, all those things. So we like to give an estimate. And we try to be conservative and we try to be realistic. We hope that when you get this and you've spent a little bit of time with it, you may look out there and go, these guys are all wet. I can, I can tell way further than that. But we don't want you to say it's, it's way less. Yeah. So we think a hog, a coyote, um, a standard size animal like that, realistically, four or 500 yards is, is, is conservative. Um, again, some guys may get a little bit further than that. Now you get a bigger animal, a horse, a cow, a deer, an elk, uh, something like that, that, that might mm. be a good bit further. Big, you know, Bigfoot, big, I mean, 1500 yeah, Bigfoot, yards Bigfoot's for Bigfoot. way out there. That's way out there. That's <laughs> going to be, that's what, what, a mile. Yeah, <laughs> for, for, for sure. So again, I just going to quickly say this, uh, this is what the real takeaway is. You already know that they're 640. Um, they are a, the 35 is twenty nine ninety five, uh, right at three thousand dollars. It is a two power base mag. The fifty is thirty four ninety five, right at thirty five hundred dollars. Mm. It's a two and a half power. Again, eighteen six fifties five year warranty. That's the big deal, mm -hmm. and we're fixing to get into more of the details. I think Hans is going to do kind of a quick walk around yeah. what's in the box, 
and then we will tell you what we really think about these units. People really like the what's in the box because I think we missed it one week and we had some people like, hey, what happened? Hey, I want to show you this is the outside cardboard box that it comes in. And if you will miss it, uh, you can easily. There's a little box right here at the top. That little box has your 18650 charging base in it. Ask us how we know that and ask us why <laughs> Why yeah. there's people saying that they missed it because we might have been, <laughs> we might have missed it ourselves. I'm just saying, I don't know. Uh, here it's is the, the very nice case that it comes in. Very, you know, it does come with this case and it comes with a, uh, a little, uh, like a neoprene case that you can slide into, like a sleeve. It does come with two 18650 rechargeable batteries. You got your USB um, cord. Uh, for getting videos off the optic or running with an external battery pack. Uh, and you got your wall plugs. You even got it, one in there for Europe. So if you ever oh, travel, yeah. don't ever travel outside the country with your thermal. Um, but if you have a, an Airbnb uh, that is trying to be, you know, fancy and they have European plugs here in the United States, then you can there definitely you use that plug. All right. So here is, this is the, uh, I've got the Sidewinder TM35. 640. So it's got the flip open spring loaded objective lens cover, uh, very nice push little button and it comes open, flips open and, and goes all the way back. So it stays out of your way. I really like that. Uh, we talked about the USB plug on the bottom and it's got like a little tripod, uh, screw stud part here that you can put on. A lot of people ask about that, uh, as far as being able to mount it on a tripod, uh, to make it easier. So you don't have to hold it all the time. So got that on the bottom. Uh, you do, it is dual focus, meaning it does have an objective lens focus here, uh, right here by the objective lens, and an eyepiece to after focus here on the end. Got your rubber eye cup right here. Uh, and then your four button layout on top with, uh, you know, very, I really like these ba uh, buttons, Jason. I don't know if we talked about that before, but yeah. spacing on it is very generous. A lot of spacing in there. They're raised. Mm -hmm. They've got a, a couple different notches on here. Absolutely can run this. In the winter, with gloves on, you won't have a problem. That is a big, big deal. I think a lot of manufacturers are starting to pay attention to that. A lot of you coyote hunters are running these optics with gloves on. And I know how difficult it can be with some of these scopes because the buttons are tiny. They're so close together. And you don't want to have to take your gloves off every time you want to do something on your optics. So the very generous button spacing layout and they're raised really like that. And then on the side here, you got your 18650 uh, compartment that holds one 18650 battery. Again, the optic comes with two, but as you can see, I mean, it's the uh, size. I want to say it's the standard size of a monocular, but um, not too big, but that is it. I don't think I missed anything. Okay. You tell me otherwise. I, I, no, I would call it a, a standard full yeah, size. I, yeah, I mean it's it's no. I mean it's I've seen bigger, so it's just I think it's the a trend normal lately has been. Monocular. Yeah, the trend lately has been like more compact. I, I this is the standard that I think you and I are very familiar with, just from different models in the past. But you know this uh, they AGM had the ASP uh, monoculars a, a long a long I don't want to say a long time ago, but uh, previously several years. several years ago, and the ASP. Some of the ASP models seem bigger to me as far as bigger around than this one. But anyway, I'm rambling. Go on. I'll, I'll let you get. All right. <laughs> I'll get. So get into here's it. a question that I know is going to come up because we've already re reviewed the 384 resolution version of these. And we get this question all the time. And it's a logical question. Is the 640 versions or these models uh, worth the extra money? over the 384 versions because what we're looking at here on these prices is um 2000 versus 3000 um 2200 versus 3500 i mean you know you're talking about a big upgrade it's a thousand dollar upgrade is it worth it um should i do it well i think the first thing hans and i are always going to come down and say is it depends on your budget you know, I don't know what your budget is, and that's that's you know your business, uh, and you've got to decide what you can truly afford and not. If you really can't afford or really don't need to spend the money or really don't want to spend the money on the 640, then do not do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's there's a first answer. Now, if you say, okay, I got the money, and maybe I don't want to jump it up and down, burn a hole in my pocket <laughs> to spend it, but I will if you think it's mm -hmm. worth it. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference, or is this some type of snake oil 
where I'm really not gonna gonna see it, you know, any real benefit, or is this, you know, heated and cooled leather seats, and I live in California and it's seventy degrees all year. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> that was off the cuff. I was about to say <laughs> your analogies here are going way. That's you know, spot on. Off, That's yeah. a good. Hey, there's gonna be a comment. That's a good one. I may use that one again. Yeah. Trademark. Yeah. So, so <laughs> got me tickled now. All right. So the answer to that is, I think. Again, all these caveats aside, yes, it is worth it. I mean, it, it's worth it if you've got the money and you're willing to spend it. Um, Hans brought up a good point uh, before we were kind of talking about this. And he's like, you know, one of the things that he tells guys when he's talking to them on the phone, you know, when they, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, do you hunt once a year? Do you hunt twice a year? Do you hunt four times during a season? You know, mm -hmm. how much do you hunt? If, if you're out here every night, yeah, it's worth it. I mean, it. You know, if, if you got the money, again, we're, we got to set that. If you got the money and you're willing to spend it, yeah, it's worth it. Um, are you hunting two or three times a week? Yeah, it, it's it's worth it. You know, if you want to go out and make the absolute most of it when you do hunt, maybe that's only maybe that is only once a year, but you want to be the best. It is. So I guess what it boils down to is is the question comes down: If I put these side by side, mm -hmm. can I tell the difference? Yes. You can tell the difference. Mm -hmm. and, and someone who's never looked through thermal, if, if I hand them to them and I say, okay, we're going to look out across this field and there's hogs down there or there's deer or there's coyotes or whatever at, at two, three, four, five, six hundred yards. Mm -hmm. And we look through both of them. I go, which one costs more? Which one, which one do you think? Which one has a better image? They're going to pick the six. And, and I think our so, answer, yeah, yeah, I think our answer would be the same no matter what optic scope, whatever we're reviewing, the difference between 640 and 384, there yep. always is going to be a noticeable difference uh, between the two. And, and, and I think you're right as far as if it's worth it or not. And there's people out there that say, you know what? I hunt two times a year, but I want the best I can get. And I got the money. Well, gosh, dang it. You came to the right place. Uh, but yeah. uh, now, now I'm going to yeah. say one thing, Hans, I'm going to throw this kink in this. This is where this kink always comes. And this is when we say, the guy goes, wait a minute, I thought I understood. Now you just confused me. And this is where we say, here's our phone number. Call us. And <laughs> we'll be glad to help you when you're ready yeah. to, to pick one out and make the purchase. But that is, these, we can say they're worth it because we're comparing similar magnifications. Mm -hmm. A two power to a two power, a two and a half to a three power, and we're in a handheld. That is, the, I can say it's worth it. If we were comparing lower magnifications or higher magnifications that could change mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, absolutely. So we can say that on these because they kept these magnifications so close. Mm -hmm. um, if the magnifications were, were different by a full power, then I'd say, Oh, well, hold on. We got to mm -hmm. talk about, you know, your situation more. So, all yeah. right. So that is it. Let's talk about some likes and some dislikes. Mm -hmm. Hans, I'm going to let you, I always do the dislikes and I always, uh, I'm the bad yeah. guy. So, so you go first, you tell so, us what you don't like about this. Yeah. <laughs> tell us why you hate this scope. No, <laughs> it kind of like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so the dislikes, as always, we try to be, uh, try to scrutinize as much as possible. Sometimes we get nitpicky, but that's our, our job. I would say for me, the, the, I guess the biggest dislike about it, and it's again petty. The battery door is a little a little cumbersome to me to be able to to get the door off, to get it back on, to get it in there, clamp down. It's a little cumbersome. I, I could see it being a little bit of a challenge at night with no light, uh, you know, without a flashlight. Or if you're doing it in the dark, it might be a little bit of a challenge. You may practice and and get perfect at it, but it just seemed like I was messing with it a little bit longer than I should have. Very, very small negative. Uh, but again, I think you might notice that a little bit. Um, I would say uh, it would be nice if it had a, pa a padded hand strap uh, in a perfect mm -hmm. world. If we were, if they called us up and said, Jason Hans, well, you know, what's the perfect monocular? I think we would always design one with a padded hand strap. Am I wrong about that? Uh, as yeah. far as these, yeah. this size monocular. Uh, and then I would say the only thing is, we talked about the trend of monoculars being a little bit smaller. This is more the the standard or, or traditional design of a monocular. A little bit on the bigger side, it's not going to fit as easy in your pocket. Uh, it's not going to be as convenient as some of the smaller ones. As you can see, I mean, pretty 
uh, pretty big monocular, but uh, but again, it's the standard size of what we've seen for a long time. You and I are very used to carrying monocular size just from all the models that we use and, and that we prefer. But it is you're not gonna. It's gonna be hard to slip in your back pocket. Uh, so yeah, those are the only really the only negatives I could come up with. They're not not very much there to tell you the truth. Yeah, I was just about to say. This is the size of the monoculars we use. Exactly. I mean, yeah. this is this is I, the they kind might of even be a little bit smaller. I'm going to take, I'm gonna take um, a, a sidewinder or a, a competitor of it. Uh, it we, again, I've been using the sidewinders. We were we were able to use the sidewinders actually last fall before mm-hmm. they had been announced and released, and I ate the thing up. I mean, I, oh, yeah. I loved them. I mean, the 384 and the 640, and we've used these for a long time, and. I, I mean, yeah. personally, I, I like the size, so I don't have any any problem. Now, talking about the positives. Um, Did we leave off one negative? Per- I think we oh, left off oh, one negative, and I and I just thought that? about it. I know that from our last conversation about the side, the eye cup. You're not a big fan of this eye cup, right? Oh, gosh. Yeah, let's yeah talk I'm glad about you that. mentioned that. Yeah. I'm, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm not. I, I, I wish that eye cup. Now, let me say this, guys. These have been out a little while. We've sold a lot of these. We've had a lot pre-sold, the 384s and the 640s. I haven't had anybody call us back and say, oh, my gosh, can't stand the iCup, even though we kind of gave them pre-warning, like put the thought in their head. But I will say, again, nitpicking, I, I don't like the iCup. I, I think the iCup is a little stiff. I think it's a little bigger round. I wish that it was different. You can take the iCup off. Um, I don't think that helps. It feels weird without it on there. It's just hard plastic it's, at that point. Yeah. It's, it's a little I uncomfortable, just, though, you know, because the edge of it kind of pokes into the side of your nose, you know, it's it just does. like kind of uncomfortable a little bit. It's it's not a normal eye cup. I wish that it was, an, and, you know, maybe one day somebody will, you know, I don't know, can you 3, 3D print rubber? I don't know. Maybe somebody mm-hmm. will, maybe somebody <laughs> will make something new, but it's okay. It's not, I wouldn't not buy it because of that. You know, it's kind of the, the small things we are nitpicking, but yeah, I, I think the eye cup could be better on it. Yeah. So that I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. I did forget about that. So moving into the positives, I think the very first thing, and we really, I know we've been going down specs and, and likes and dislikes, and we haven't really got into any of the, the real details of the unit, but I think this is where I'm going to start, and it's going to be the image quality. Mm-hmm. This is, and I'm, I'm pausing because I'm thinking this out here. That just means you're about to this say something true. important when you when you pause. It it's like important. okay, I that's sure letting I the audience wrong, know yeah. that something is big this, is about to be a, a said. So go ahead. This is the <laughs> best 640 thermal image quality that AGM has released to date. Period. Um, Hans, you disagree with that? No, I, I don't disagree with that. I, I do think it's. Are you talking about just monoculars or scope and monoculars? Overall, this Overall. is the best image quality they've got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. With I mean, that. this is this is fantastic image yep. quality, yep. and I mean, to me, this moves them into a different level. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. We don't know what's going to come out in the next. Um, I don't know. Well, I guess we're in in May, so six months mm-hmm. uh, left of the year. Uh, I know there's there's going to be some more competition for this unit, but I don't know what all. Uh, I'll say this right now. This monocular, this this 640 Sidewinder is going to be in the running for the best high resolution thermal monocular of the year. I oh, can 100%. Tell you that. I mean, 100%. I mean, this is, Both of them. Th- th- this, this one right and the now, 384 are going to be uh, yes, very uh, yeah, top absolutely. contenders. But for, but for high resolution today on the market, what's available? This is a top two unit. Mm. And I mean, we can argue about which one you like better. I mean, that we're talking about this is... Absolutely, hands down, one of the best image quality thermal monoculars ever released on the market by any brand, mm-hmm. period. I mean, this is legit, guys. I know, and you're like, well, wait a minute, where did that come from? Well, we haven't gotten there yet because we were too busy with the specs. So this is my like. Image quality is great. It is better than great. It is fantastic. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, this is like, this is the That's why I took so long. I want to make sure I was saying this right. And I was thinking like, there's been so much new stuff coming out. I was making sure I didn't like miss something else AGM had done, but this is the best image quality uh, they've released. Mm-hmm. It is very, very good. So yeah. we'll, again, we'll, we'll you know, harp on that a little bit more here in a minute. Um, the other, like I think is gotta be these 18650s. 
Uh, guys, when you're talking about getting four or five hours on a, a, a battery, and it comes with two. I'm sure mm -hmm. Hans probably mm -hmm. showed that. It comes with two batteries. And you can buy more 18650s. You can buy uh, a brand we like is Nightcore, N-I-T-E-C-O-R-E. That's a mm -hmm. really good brand. There's other good brands I'm sure out there. Uh, just know this. If you go to, to you know eBay and Amazon, these places, and you just start buying random, no-name, uh, you know, brand batteries, you're probably, you could be getting what you pay for. You know, you may, you may get a good one every once in a while, but, but you, you just don't know. So I would say Nightcore is a really good brand. There's some others out there, but that's what you're going to need to make sure. Cause we, we do, this is an issue. And I know this is what some of the manufacturers, the reason they don't like doing this. Cause we do have these calls. Sometimes a guy buys uh, when he can put the battery, it's not a proprietary battery. He can go buy one. He gets some cheapo battery mm -hmm. that gets 30 minutes of runtime and he's stomping his feet mad when in reality, he's got a, a bad battery, a cheap battery. And, you know, you put a good battery and you get four hours or five hours. So I know the manufacturers don't like that because they kind of lose control. So right. uh, we do love the 18650s, though. It's a very, uh, I'm going to say cheap battery. I mean, 10 to 15, 20, even if you buy a really, really, really good one, maybe 25 bucks, that'd be an expensive battery. And you're talking about getting, you know, four or five hours of runtime off of it, mm. fully removable, no internal battery at all. We, we love the 18650s. Thank you, AGM, for listening <laughs> to your customers exactly. on that one. Um, next, warranty, five year warranty, bumper to bumper. Uh, that's a big deal. I mean, that's five years. So that gives you a lot of time to use this unit. And, uh, you know, maybe you want to use it for, for two or three years. And then you go, man, they got something new. I want that. Well, you can sell this to your buddy, you know, give this to your kid, your brother-in-law, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And they've still got whatever's left, two yep. or three years of warranty. That is a transferable warranty. Yep. And, that's a that's a big deal. That that makes the value of that unit because now the guy that's getting it from you used, he feels better about it. You know, yeah. well, I've still got whatever two three years of warranty on it. So we love the warranty, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, Hans already mentioned it uh, in the walk around being able to use gloves. I think the way that the buttons are laid out, we we always like that because there is a lot of cold weather hunters. I think the negative twenty two degree temperature rating is another mm. big deal. Um, that's something that, uh, that's really, really cold weather rating. There's a lot of units that, that aren't rated for that. So, uh, glad to see a, a cold weather rating. And then I think the last thing is going to be that ambidextrous design. And that is nice. Uh, we've got, you know, a lot of left-handed guys. I mean, Ashley, um, our, our salesman, He's really weird, and he's left-handed, and so I'm just sounds like I'm a birth. It sounds like a birth defect. Left-handed, exactly, is that a, is that a exactly. Defect? I know he's listening to this, so it's yeah, definitely yeah. yeah. And and uh, yeah, my my, my son is is left-handed, so I guess I can say that as <laughs> I've tried as hard as I can yeah. to make him right-handed. He's he's to, or or as we call it, wrong-handed. So yeah, he's still yeah. wrong-handed, yeah. but yeah. So it is ambidextrous. Do like that. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's my big long list of likes. Yeah. And, um, Hans, let's jump into, I mean, I've already kind of gone into this mm -hmm. image quality, but let's talk a little bit more about the overall thoughts and really kind of, you know, who we think needs to get, there's, there's yeah. two models. That's going to be something that I know people are going to want to know, yeah. um, which model to get and kind of, what are you thinking here? So I, I think we talked about the fact, and, and you, you did a good job talking about it, is 384, uh, you know, is there a big difference? Is 640 resolution worth the money? I think we kind of answered that question and people deciding on, on whether to go from, that 384 model, the 640 model, as far as between the 35 and the 50, um, I, I would say most people, and I hate to categorize a lot of people like that, but most people, the, the 35, the TM35 with the lower base magnification is going to be more ideal. Uh, it's going to, for a scanner, I, I think it's important to have as wide a field of view as you can. Uh, that way you're, you're hey. covering, yeah. I'm going to interrupt your train of thought. Oh, if gosh. anybody was watching here, if you had, if you had me on here, <laughs> I was looking down and, and I didn't go over this in the specs because uh, I had missed it uh -oh. and the field of view was there, but it was in degrees, which oh. isn't overly helpful. So uh, while you were talking, I, I was knew you were going to go into field of view. So mm -hmm. I was doing the math real quick. So the, the TM 35, 640 uh -huh. 
has a 65 and a half. So we'll just, we'll, yeah. we'll just call it 65, 65 foot field of view versus a 45 foot field of view. So going up in that yeah. uh, half of power, yeah. you're losing 20 feet of field of view and you are, and again, I'm not going to go down this whole rabbit trail because we've talked about this on other shows and we'll probably mm -hmm. do it again later. But the, 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 the misunderstanding is that, well, it's got a 50 millimeter lens, so it's got to be a right. bigger field yeah. of view. It's got to yeah. be a better image quality. There is zero better image quality out of the mm -hmm. 50. It's exactly mm -hmm. the same. And the field of view is narrower because the magnification is more. These function more like cameras yeah. than they do like daytime optics. So that's the it, confusion. But is that 65 like a, and 45 feet, yeah, is carry that like 30 on back to what you were saying. Isn't that like 37%? percent My math is terrible. But it seems like a third uh, less field of view uh, to me. Yeah, I but I, but I would say, yeah, that's a lot of field of view, especially when you're scanning side to side. If you're in hunting uh, brush and cover, small, uh, small fields, uh, medium sized fields. Again, that field of view, you will see more animals. You will, you will not miss as many more animals. If you have something that you can scan a, a wide, uh, a wide area. Again, with a monocular, you're going to have it turned on 95% of the time. A scope is going to be about five to 10% of the time. But you know, with, with a monocular, you can scan 360 degrees all around you at all times. Now the, the, the 50 millimeter, um, the TM 50, I would say if you were hunting in very, very wide open areas uh, where you can see several hundred yards in all directions, I would say I would pick the one with the higher magnification. But I would, you know, again, I would think the majority of the people uh, are going to fall into the, the category of wanting the, the lower base magnification, the wider field of view. So I, I do agree with you there. I mean, again, I think a lot of our northern guys – uh, that are in the big wide open country in the plains in the northwest, they may they may tend a little more to to that two and a half power, and I don't think they would be hurt by the two power, but they may lean that way. Mm -hmm. I think southern southern hunters, uh, southern hog and predator hunters mm -hmm. that are, are not out there in big big wide open country, um, I think they'd lean towards the, yeah. the, again that two power. So you know you you mentioned that um, yeah North, thirty percent northwest and, right, and there's oh go ahead. What did you say? I was going to say, and the people up in the Northwest and on the East Coast, you know, that we talk to all the time that are, you know, the guys that are fox hunting in Maryland and that kind of stuff, or, yeah. or the, you know, West Virginia, I mean, definitely Kentucky, uh, the the wider field of view is very, very important. I definitely agree. And I think in most of the South down here where we're at, East Texas and, and all the way mm -hmm. over, uh, and again, I know you get into some farm country there in, in Mississippi and some areas, but, you know, when you're in Trees, brush, uh -huh. smaller fields. I think that's probably where you're going to be. You know, you're talking about that field of view. How's my math? It is. It's it's thirty percent. So this when, when you go from the sixty five. Now wait a minute. I'm going to see which way. If you're a car salesman, which way you you say this? So it's sixty five percent less. I'm sorry, not sixty five percent. It's thirty percent less on the sixty five foot, uh, but it's actually a forty percent more when you're coming from the, the, the 50 and you go up to the 65 mm -hmm. foot uh, field of view. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a big difference. It's, uh, it's worth considering. Again, those, yeah. I don't think this is the make or break decision. Yeah. If I gave you one of these optics and three days later, you know, gave you the other one, I don't think you're going to be like, Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Wild difference. You know, you, you put them side by side, you're going to see it though. So all of yeah, those, I, I think all of those math point. teachers that said I was going to turn out to be nothing. Look at me now. That's all I can say. They are, they were, they were correct. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he had a lucky guess on a percentage get, yeah. one time. Exactly. You know, exactly. Lucky guess. Uh -huh. Now, so guys, I think here's the deal. At the end of the day, I mean, I think our likes and our dislikes, but, but our likes and our, our the, these you know, thoughts right here that Hans has kind of dropped, I think this sums it up. I mean, we're, we're talking about, I mean, I don't know what else there is to say. Fantastic image quality, 18650 battery, five-year warranty, all the, I mean, recording, audio, video, mm -hmm. uh, color palettes, Wi-Fi for streaming. It does it all, mm -hmm. okay? It does everything you want to do, everything you need to possibly do, and... It's a darn good unit. I mean, I like the the feel of that housing. I know Hans has showed it there. It's got kind of a rubbery feel to it. Um, I, I like that. 
Very I grippy. Think it's a, is that what the word, the very, scientific grippy. word, grippy? Grippy. <laughs> grippy. It's, a, it's a grippy, yeah. No, it is. It's it's a very good unit. Uh, very feels very quality made. Um, like it a lot. I, I think that if you're in the market for a 640 high-resolution thermal handheld, I think this needs to be on your short list. Mm-hmm. I think you need to be looking at this unit hard and saying, you know, how does this compare? And there's some tough competition out there for it. But this, I think, shakes the game mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. On, on what you need to look at. Uh, in the past, we would have said, you know, there's probably only one other optic to look at. Now I'd say, oh, boy, the field is, is kind of opening up here mm-hmm. as AGM is bringing in the competition. Right. Uh, if, if you're interested in, in this, and maybe you're still confused. I don't know if I need 384. Whoop, hitting my camera here. I don't know if I need 384. I don't know if I need 640. And, you know, what do I do here? Give us a call. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're glad to help. I mean, Hans. Uh, our other salesman, Ashley, myself, we have all spent a tremendous amount of time behind these units. Uh, we're absolutely happy to help you before you make that purchase. Mm-hmm. We would love to have your business. It is a service that we offer to our customers. Uh, we, uh, if, if you know, and you're just like, I know exactly what I want. I'm going to OutdoorLegacyGear.com. I'm going to click. I'm going to buy it. Done. Y'all have helped me. Perfect. Thank you. We appreciate your business. But if you're like, uh, I think I want this one, but what about this one? Maybe the th- call us because that's what we're here for. We want to help you sort this out. And again, if you're going to buy from us, we want you to get the right thing. And we're happy to do that for you. So 877-350-1818 is how to talk to us uh, on the phone about these optics and figure out which you know you think will work best for you. Well, we'd love to earn your business, and we'd love that chance. So definitely give us a call, and we want to talk to you. Uh, we definitely want to talk to you. Anyway, um, if you want to find more of the past episodes of the Late Night Vision Show, you can always do that. Uh, TheLateNightVisionShow.com. You can find us on YouTube. Please subscribe everywhere. Uh, you can watch our videos on Facebook, on Spotify, I think maybe on Amazon, or you can at least listen on Amazon, uh, iTunes, Google Play, anywhere else that you're trying to find our show uh, you can do a quick Google search, The Late Night at Vision Show, and find a, a source, a media source that's preferable to you to either view or listen to the show. If you want to find more about Outdoor Legacy, you've already heard the website, OutdoorLegacyHere.com, uh, but you can find uh, Outdoor Legacy on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Uh, you can also find myself on YouTube, Hans e- Te- East Texas, Hans ETX, uh, and on Instagram and Facebook, and Ashley uh, on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, Row ETX. That's R O W E ETX. Uh, and we will, hey, I want to remind everybody tune in next Tuesday for our two minute Tuesday episode 264 preview. So you know exactly what we're going to be talking about. Get you amped I love up. It when, when, when Hans commits to things. And uh, uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give credit where credit's due. Uh, hopefully he's not even still listening. It was so Ashley's know, idea. The that, guy that has this was not Ashley's been on, idea. I think a customer mentioned it to him. <laughs> and uh, we'd had a couple people that over the years, said, man, I kind of wish I knew what was coming up on, you know, Thursdays. I wish y'all, but, but Ashley really brought it, laid it out. I was like, guys, I think, I think y'all do this. I think it would be a good deal if we did it. And so anyway, we're going to give him credit. I hope well, he's not we're going to make him start so, doing these. So that's the thing. Is. Exactly. That's right. He's, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to be doing these yeah. too. If we're doing them, his yeah, idea, exactly. that's, Hey, y'all, y'all know how that works. Exactly. You know, you come up with a good idea, you know, sure. Go do it. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so exactly. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show again, outdoor legacy or eight, seven, seven, three, five, zero, one, eight, one, eight. We would love to have your business. Uh, this is what Hans and Ashley and myself and the ladies in the office, this is what we do for a living is we sell thermal scopes and night vision optics and, and all this. And so give us a call. We'd mm-hmm. love to have your business and love to, to uh, you know, be able to serve you. So guys, hope to see you here next week, episode 264. Between now and then, y'all stay safe in the fields. Keep making those bacon pancakes. Thank you.